Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Feast of Epiphany. Um, this is the season that immediately follows the Christmas tide season. And once again, I have a song um, about the season that I've written with Malcolm Geit. And once again, I have him in the studio to introduce it. So uh, he'll introduce the song and I'll sing it. Uh, this is for the journey this week, and my name is Steve Bell. So I'm going to, to tell you really about a, a poem that's the beginning of my, my long and happy collaboration and co-working with, with Steve Bell. Uh, it's Epiphany on the Jordan, which he made into a wonderful song. I was writing a series of poems for the Sundays of Epiphany, and in the readings in the Church of England for the Sundays of Epiphany, what they pick is just those readings that give you an epiphany. That is to say, an opening up, a glimpse, a moment when suddenly the veil is moved and you really get to see who Jesus is. It was an epiphany when he turned the water into wine. It was an epiphany when he called the disciples and they suddenly realized who he is. Those were moments of epiphany. And um, perhaps the quintessential moment of epiphany in all the gospel narratives is the moment of Jesus' baptism when suddenly it's revealed. We hear, and it's a, not only a revelation of Jesus, of course, but of the whole Holy Trinity, because suddenly we hear the Father speaking, this is my beloved in whom I delight. We see the Son giving praise to the Father, and then we see the Spirit descending like a dove. So I had this poem, and I was going to be preaching on the Epiphany, and I so I, I, I was working on the poem, and I'd really only just met Steve, but I really liked him, and I just felt a kind of, he was a kindred spirit. So a bit randomly, to be honest, I just sent him the poem and said, this is something I've just finished. I'm, and also here's a link to the sermon. You know, you might enjoy it. And um, turned out Steve was on a writing retreat and was a bit stuck. And he really shouldn't have been answering his phone. But I guess he, his phone pinged and my poem came through. And uh, it worked for him. And he did a really remarkable thing. Again, he he exercises great freedom. He doesn't start where I start. He moves around. He sees where in the sonnet is the key line. He brings that out in different ways. He's making a new thing. He's not slavishly following the old, but the new thing is beautiful. It was my first experience, which I've now happily had many times, of, of Steve as a sort of deep well out of which my voice echoes in a different way. The poet Seamus Heaney, talking about wells, he says, others had echoes and gave you back your own voice with a clean new music in it. So I'll, I'll, I'll read you the poem and uh, recite you the poem indeed, and uh, then you'll sort of hear uh, with Steve the clean new music. Um, <clears throat> so Epiphany on the Jordan. Beginning here, we glimpse the three in one. The river runs, the clouds are torn apart, the Father speaks, the Spirit and the Son reveal to us the single loving heart that beats behind the being of all things and calls and keeps and kindles us to light. The dove descends, the Spirit soars and sings, you are beloved, you are my delight. In that quick light and life, as water spills and streams around the man like quickening rain, the voice that made the universe reveals the God in man who makes it new again. He calls us, too, to step into that river, to die and rise and live and love forever. Now it's over to Steve. He just sent me this back. Like I hadn't, it was not long after I sent this to him that I received a, a message with a recording. I couldn't believe it. There was my poem, Born to a Kind of New Life. The heaven split and the water spilled And streamed around that man like a quickening rain A quickening rain The word behind all worlds revealed that God in man makes everything new again New again 
this word of God to his beloved has settled on me like a dove. He calls us to, to step into that river to die and rise to life and love forever. And so graciously extends to me a sinner Tread the sacred waters of this mystery of love. And what can be said about a mystery except to say that the last word can never be said, never said. Best leave that to poetry, a kindling words for quick the dead, the living dead, pure single heart behind all things, each to the other by the Spirit sings. He calls us to, to step into that river, to die and rise to life and love forever. So graciously extends to me a sinner To tread the sacred waters of this mystery of love He calls us to, to step into that river To die and rise to life and love forever And so graciously extends to me a sinner to tread the sacred waters of this mystery of love. And the water spilled and streamed around that man like a quickening 